Buongiorno a tutti, però morning ladies and gentlemen. We are uh, speaking of a duplex stainless steel and um, we are trying to assess which are the best ways to weld the job, to weld them by performing three different methods of joining. Two are metal in cases. The first one with one front and one back bed. The second one more front and one back bed. And the plate three, we have a submerged aquarium. Many type of testing have been performed here. The chemical composition of the base material and of the filler material is different. In the case of the filler material, we have more austenite stabilizing elements. And here is the macro image of the welding beds. And we have been trying to analyze the fusion zone where most of the fracture happened, the heat affected zone and the base material. This is the usual uh, base material mi microstructure with austenite elongated in the longitudinal direction. And uh, <coughs> if we go to a uh, more detailed, detailed view of the heat affected zone <coughs> and of the fusion zone, we see in the heat affected zone that uh, where some of the austenite crystal remain elongated in one direction, there is more <coughs> inclined type of uh, crystals in respect to the same longitudinal direction. And um, we went to a binary image analysis to see what is uh, the different percentage of ferrite and austenite in uh, the various zones. And here are the results in the base materials. We have a 50 to 50 percent. With the first plate, the ferrite percentage increases in the heat affected zone. What's the difference that between the first and the second plate is the cooling rate. Only one bed in the plate one moves to bed in plate two. And the third plate is a submerged duct welding where the cooling rate is low. In the fusion zone, we see <coughs> decrease in the amount of the right uh, percentage going from MIG to SA, MIW and uh, SAW uh, type of um, welding. Various um, tests have been affected to assess what is the hardness of the right and austenite in the various zones and uh, moreover in the same we went also to an NDS spot chemical analysis these are results from plate 2 showing the various points in which uh, the spot EDS analysis was affected and to arrive to determine what is the R coefficient, which is the ratio between the right stabilizing elements and the austenite stabilizing elements. And in the base material for the same plate as before, we were with did find obviously that the uh, R values was higher in the ferrite than in the austenitis as well in the fusion zone. 
to understand why there are different uh, percentages. There is this uh, Warning Research Council diagram that allows you to have an idea where you are. This is our type of materials that have been welded in various ways. And uh, then you have to reason on the velocity of the cooling rate that is uh, higher, in, as I told you, in the first plate, is lower in the second and in the third plate. Base material testing, st uh, tensile, uh, tests did give similar results for what concerns the ultimate tensile strength, a little bit of scatter as it regards the fracture strain. I can go rapidly to the conclusions when we went after to the we went after to make impact tests. What we found is from the Chartini test results, it is better it is better to have a single bed and uh, instead multiple beds yield a lower value of the impact. Uh, and our value of uh, uh, absorb the energy on impact. The third one is sometimes similar to the first one, sometimes similar to the second one. So really the best way to weld this type of duplex stainless steel is by conducting a single bed test. And we went also to determine on the mixed type of fracture morphologies, which was the R coefficient on the ductile and uh, brittle type of morphologies and in fact we saw that uh, the coefficient is lower for uh, the ductile morphology in respect to the higher value that we find in the brittle morphology which means that austenite is more ductile than ferrite and this is the message that I am conveying to you. Thank you so much for <laughs>